Mr. President, thanks for the time. Thank you. You know, I've asked this question, the same first question, to all the candidates I've interviewed this year, and that is this. What do you think is the most important issue facing the country right now? So many so important, but we have to straighten out the economy. We're going to do that through inflation. We have to straighten out our border, where we have millions of people pouring in, and we're going to do that very quickly. I had the safest border in the history of our country, and now we have the most unsafe, I think, anywhere in the world. There's never been anything like it. We have to strengthen up our military, giving $85 billion, billion dollars to Afghanistan didn't exactly help, but we have to strengthen up our military, get the woke out of our military, and uh, basically respect all over the world. We don't have it anymore. We had tremendous respect three years ago. We don't have respect anymore. They don't listen to us. They don't care about us. Uh, they, they just don't do what we want them to do and what they have to do, especially since we make life very good for many countries. And we have to get that respect back. And if we don't, We've got some big problems. We asked viewers to send in questions on social media. We had a ton of responses. Uh, here's one of them. Erica tweets this. What is the first thing you will do to turn this country around if you get elected? Well, I do two simultaneously. I'd start drilling. We have the most liquid gold under our feet oil than any other country, more than Saudi Arabia, more than Russia. And that's going to bring down the pressure on inflation. And we're going to have very little inflation very soon. We had virtually none when I was president. And and second, I'd close up the border, because we can't have prisoners and uh, people from mental institutions coming into our country. They're emptying out from all over the world, not just from the three or four countries we talk about, the neighboring countries all over the world. They're coming into our country at, at levels that nobody's ever seen before, Brett, and we have to stop it. And they are emptying out their prisons, and they're emptying out their mental institutions and insane asylums into the U.S., and we're not a dumping ground. I would stop it immediately and get a lot of the bad ones out. We'd get them out very quickly. Fox viewers were able to watch your speech here at Bedminster. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. Sir. The day of your arrest and can you believe it? Federal arrest um, by my opponent. Appearance in uh, federal court in Miami. Right. And your explanation of the Presidential Records Act and your defense, how you and others believe that that applies here. Obviously, you know other legal experts, your Attorney General Bill Barr, um, they do not think that that applies to handling classified national security and defense materials. But that legal battle aside, I just want to ask you a couple of specifics. Why did you have this very sensitive national security defense documents, like the war plans for a strike on Iran? So like every other president, I take things out. And in my case, I took it out pretty much in a hurry. But people packed it up, and we, we left. And I had clothing in there. I had all sorts of personal items in there, much, much stuff. And by the way, when Bill Barr, who's, you know, a coward, Bill Barr was a coward. Bill Barr didn't do what he was supposed to do. I fired him, and he has great hatred. And that's okay, because some people do. He and some people resigned. love me very much. He didn't resign. I, w I asked him, give me a letter immediately, because he didn't have the courage to go after so many different things. And you and I have discussed that before. But he was a coward. And he obviously doesn't like me too much. And there are a lot of people that don't. And there are a lot of people that feel just the opposite. But on the specific but, on but the documents. Let me just explain. Yeah. So I've had a lot of things in there. I will go through those boxes. I have to go through those boxes. I take out personal things. Uh, as far as the levels and all, everything was declassified, because I had the right to declassify. You want to talk about a mess, take a look at Biden where he's got 1,850 boxes. He has boxes stored in Chinatown in D.C. He has boxes stored at Penn Center. And he has boxes under his Corvette and around his Corvette, sitting in a garage for years, where it was very seriously classified. I have every right to have those boxes. This is purely a Presidential Records Act. This is not a criminal thing. In fact, the New York Times, of all, had a story just the other day that the only way NARA could ever get this stuff, this back, would be, please, 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 could we have it back? And they please. asked for that. Because they have no... We they were did talking. ask for it. No. And they said, I gave can you give some, the documents back? And we were talking. And then they said they went to DOJ to subpoena you to get them Which back. they've never done before. Right. And, and but why fairness, not just hand them over then? Because I had boxes. I want to go through the boxes and get all my personal things out. I don't want to hand that over to NARA yet. 
And I was very busy, as you've sort of seen. Yeah, but I've according very, to the indictment, busy. you then tell this aide to move to other locations after telling your lawyers to say you'd fully complied with the subpoena when you hadn't. But before I send boxes over, I have to take all of my things out. These boxes were interspersed with all sorts of things, uh, golf shirts, clothing, pants, shoes. There were many things. Oh, I would say Obama much, Obama? much more, not that I know of, but not that I know of, but everything was declassified. And Biden didn't have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Nor did Mike Pence, by the way, have the right to do that because he wasn't president. Right, I'm not going to belabor this. No, but belabor Brett, this. But when I, you look I at this, just get to the other specific. presidents, when they leave, they take the papers. They have thousands and thousands. Obama had it. Nixon had it. Carter had Their it. The Bushes had it. Their argument is that these it. are super sensitive national security oh, documents. I'm sure, I'm sure, All right, so here's, I'm sure you'll see is, real super sensitive that Biden has because Biden has far more than anybody's ever kept. And he turned them over when asked. No, he but, didn't. But he that, still hasn't he given the 1,850 boxes that's stored at the University of Delaware. In fact, they're fighting them in court, right. and they're fighting them. And but he the opened boxes, up for them to look at it. Excuse me. The boxes from Chinatown, he didn't turn them over. He sent them up to his lawyer in Boston to look at before they handed them over. And there are special counsel is looking at that, and we'll see what comes well, out of it. But I do imagine. want to just you can end imagine with this. I don't want to dwell on it. But according to the indictment, you were here at Bedminster on July 21st, 2021, after you're no longer president, and you were recorded saying that you had a document detailing a plan of attack on another country that was prepared by the U.S. military for you when you were president, the Iran attack plan. You remember that? Ready? You were recording. It wasn't a document. Okay. I had lots of paper. I had copies of newspaper articles. I had copies of magazines. I know. This I is specifically a quote. You're quoted and, on the recording know, and, saying the document was secret, adding that you could have declassified it while you were president, but, quote, now I can't. You know this is still secret, highly confidential. And the indictment cites the recording and the testimony from people in the room saying you showed it to people there that day. So you say on this, on tape... It says just the opposite. ...that you can't and, declassify and it, so you, why have it? What, what I said, when I said that I couldn't declassify it now, that's because I wasn't president. I, I never made any bones about that. When I'm not president, I can't declassify it. And that's what you said. You didn't said declassify that. it. I said, no, no. I said I couldn't declassify could it. But that wasn't a document, it. Brent. There was no document. That was a massive amount of papers and everything else talking about Iran and other things. And it may have been held up or may not, but that was not a document. I didn't have a document per se. There was nothing to declassify. These were newspaper stories, magazine stories, and articles. I'm just saying what the indictment says. Well, they, the recording people, and the look, people in the room who these testified. These people are very dishonest people. They're thugs. They're thugs. If you look at what they've done to other people, what they've done to and overturned in the U.S. Supreme Court. These are thugs. These the are suggestion was people. that you wanted this as evidence that the military, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley, had preemptively sent you plans for a possible attack on Iran and that you didn't order that to happen. That's the suggestion. I never ordered it to happen, no. But no. that's why you wanted the document. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a document from Milley. Milley, frankly, was incompetent. The last one I'd want to attack with as my leader would be Milley. That I can tell you. All right, but I last think you thing know on this. You, there are 31 documents listed nuclear capabilities of foreign countries, related to military capabilities of foreign countries, intelligence briefings on foreign countries. Why do you want to hold on to those documents after you're president? I don't say I do. You just didn't we know what was in the boxes? with NARA giving them back. All of a sudden, we got raided, which is a violation of my, you know, Fourth Amendment rights. They raided my home, and they came and they took things. We were discussing this with NARA. Look at Obama, look at Clinton. You know, Clinton took documents, Clinton took tapes in his socks. Interviews and you know with what the happened? historian. The Clinton socks case. I do know it well. And it basically said the president has every right to keep whatever he wants, and that includes me. And the question this is whether this is not a criminal case. Let highly me classified government national security documents fall in that I category, and that battle is going to be fought in the courts. It's already been fought. All right. There's a decision strongly that you can keep. But I wouldn't have kept. But they raided my house. They came in and raided. We were discussing, having very good discussions with NARA, a radical left group, by the way. And all of a sudden, my house got raided. Do you know if you still have any highly sensitive government documents? No, I, I don't have anything, no. Okay. They, but what I'm concerned about, they took everything, right? I don't know what they took. They could be stuffing it. I don't know what they put in there. And we wanted to be there when they were taking. They wouldn't let anybody in the room. They've never treated a president like this.
And that's fair for you to point out. I guess what this points to is this recording where you said you could have declassified it when you were president. You didn't. No, no, so I it's could still have classified. when I was president, but there's no document there. Those were newspaper articles. Okay. They were copies of articles and magazines. There was no document there. And I couldn't have done it after I was out. This is what you said in 2016 about handling this. In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. We also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting, protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. Your Vice President Mike Pence, Pence uh, says he's, quote, deeply troubled by what's in the indictment. And he says, quote, the indictment contains serious charges and I cannot defend what's alleged. Mike Pence had documents that were classified. And he turned them over. No, he didn't turn them over. He got caught. His lawyers found some documents and then he turned them over. Why did he have them? He shouldn't be saying that because he had classified documents. And immediately they said, oh, that's okay. And I suppose it's going to be okay with Biden, too, even though he has them in Chinatown, even though he has them in Delaware, and probably a hundred times more than I have. So you're not worried about this case? Based on the law, zero. Zero. Presidential Records Act, plus the act, plus the Clinton case, the Clinton case, which was won by Clinton as president because he took, he took tapes of leaders in his socks. Uh, zero. Okay. Zero. And every good lawyer has said it, and you've seen that. Every good lawyer has said that. Obviously, there are others you know what the, who push saying, back. And then, this you know. was a weaponization of politics. This was a weaponization of the White House. This was a horrible thing. A candidate that's leading, I'm leading Biden by a lot, they go out and they weaponize. This is a horrible thing that was done. Well, let's talk about the politics. It's never been done. Let's talk about before. the politics. You're, you're facing, obviously, a number of potential charges in other cases, and I know you've said that you, you believe that they're political course, witch hunts. Of and, course. But what do you say to the voter who really liked many of your policies? They still do. But they can't handle the scandals or the controversies or the name-calling or the vitriol. What do you say to that voter who's worried that that all leads to a general election loss? So, based on the polls, I'm leading Biden by a lot. Based on the polls, I'm leading all of the Republicans by a lot, by 40 points and more. Uh, right now, I have the best polls I've ever had. People see this stuff for what it is. It's a political witch hunt. It's a continuation. More independent voters watch Fox News than any other TV source. A lot less than used to watch it. They do watch. Those voters usually, less, they usually make up all the difference in the election. And so to the female independent voter in the suburbs who struggled with family mm -hmm. financing because of inflation, she's now against Biden, disapproves of Biden, but wasn't with you in 2020 and so far is a hard no for you in 2024. But what do you say to that? At the right polls, what, what do you say to that female independent suburban voter who feels that way to win her back? First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot, okay? You Let's know, get that straight. I won in 2020. You know that this, and if you look at all of the tapes, if the you look at showed. everything that you want to look at, you take a look at Truth to Vote, where they have people stuffing the ballot boxes on tapes, or Mr. President, let's go to recent. Well, wait a minute. Let's go to recent. FBI Twitter. Let's go to recent. The 51 agents. All corrupt stuff, Brad. Understand about all, the Hunter Biden. Well, no, but that's cheating on things, the election. But but that's cheating on the election. You lost the 2020 election. Uh, Brad. Uh, you take a look at all of the stuffed ballots. You take a look at all of the things, including things like the 51 intelligence there were, agents. There were recounts in all of the swing states. There was not significant right. widespread We're trying fraud. to get recounts, real recounts, not just numbers of votes Widespread cast. corruption. There was not a sense of that. There were lawsuits, more than 50 of them, by your lawyers, some in front of Freddie, judges, Freddie? judges that you appointed. Look at Wisconsin. That came out with Wisconsin no evidence. Is, Brett, Wisconsin has practically admitted it was rigged. Other states are doing the same right now, and it's continuing. There have been reviews it was a of every election. potential case of voter fraud in 
six battleground states, and they found fewer than 475 cases. You know why? Because they didn't affected. look at the right things. Okay, are you going they to were be counting? They were counting ballots, not the authenticity of the ballot. The ballots were fake ballots. You had this asked, was a very rigged election. Are you election. going to go? This is how you're going to tell that independent suburban no, woman no, voter no. to vote for you. We're off to winning an election, and I think we're winning very well. Uh, I got a poll just recently. I have it here. I'd no, no, show no, I you. know, and and I watched but the numbers. I've shown you every poll. I showed you we were leading by tremendous numbers, you know polls and we're change. leading with women, huh? You know, polls change. Sure. I mean, they changed in 2016 to your favor. I thought I was doing well from the beginning, but you know. But they changed the yeah. polls. What did you learn from your first term that you took from and changes that you would make if you get elected? I would like to be less combative, but I find the press is extremely dishonest. And if I'm not combative, I don't get my word across. If I'm not combative, I don't know. I, I don't think you could win. I think regardless me or somebody else, if somebody else got the nomination, these radical left maniacs would come after them at a level like you've never seen before, and they're not going to be able to withstand it. Our country is sick. It's sick. We have people that will do anything, and it's a very sad thing, like the document hoax. They should have never been brought. We're in the middle of a political campaign, and they want to arrest the opponent who's leading the person that's, in theory, in charge of government. This stuff shouldn't happen. So what changes would you make? Uh, Strong people, strong government. You know, when I came down to Washington, I was in Washington 17 times in my life in, in D.C. And uh, I never stayed overnight. I was never there. I didn't know the people. I didn't know that world, other than I was involved in politics from the other side very much. And I had I put great people in, but I put some people like Bill Barr and Bolton and a few of them that, you know, actually Bolton was good because everybody, every time I negotiated, People said, oh, they've got this maniac here. He's going to go to war with us. And they'd concede every point. I mean, it was actually pretty good in a certain way. But we put people in that were great, and we put people in that weren't. I now know Washington probably better than anybody. I know the good ones and the bad ones. And we will have really great, strong people. I already know who they are. But we will have really great, strong people. OK. In 2016, you said that. I'm going to surround myself with only the best and most serious people. Well, I did do that. This and we time, had tremendous. Look, we had the best economy we've ever had. The this world time has ever seen. Your vice president, Mike Pence, is running against you. Yeah. Your ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, she's running against you. Your former secretary of state, Mike Pompeo, said he's not supporting you. You mentioned national security advisor, John Bolton. He's not supporting you either. You mentioned Attorney General Bill Barr uh, says you shouldn't be president again. I uh, calls you the consummate narcissist and troubled man. You recently called and uh, Barr a, a gutless pig. Uh, you second defense secretary is not supporting you, called you irresponsible. This week, you and your White House called your White House chief of staff, John Kelly, weak and ineffective and born with a very small brain. You called your acting White House chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, a born loser. You called your first secretary of state, Rex Tillerson, dumb as a rock, and your first defense secretary, James Mattis, the world's most overrated general. You called your White House press secretary, Kayleigh Kennedy, milk toast, and multiple times you've referred to your transportation secretary, Elaine Chao, as Mitch McConnell's China loving wife. So, why did you hire all of them in the first place? Because I hired 10 to 1 that were fantastic. We had a great economy. We had phenomenal people in charge of the economy. We had phenomenal people in the military. I'm not a fan of Milley, and I'm not a fan of certain of the television people. But I knocked out ISIS. I defeated ISIS. They said, Mattis, it would take three years, and I don't think we can do it. I did it in a period of, like, four weeks. There's a lot of people who praise out. you for your policies. I That's just said true. that. That's true. Well, I mean, you just went through a list. But don't forget, for every one you say, I had 10 that love us. And one thing happens, I find, with me that I think didn't happen so much with other presidents. Uh, call it glamorous time, call it whatever. But with me, the Times, the Washington Post, various people, even Fox, because, you know, I'm no great fan of Fox anymore. They Where fought me. Here? They fought me very hard. Well, you've got to get your word out somehow, right? They fought me very hard in 2016, very much the way they're fighting me now. Very, very hard. And I won. Then they became very nice. But I will tell you that. Uh, Something happens. When people leave, they can like me very much. I have this woman named Alyssa Farah. 
She said the greatest things. Long after she left, he's the greatest president we've ever had. He was unbelievable, unbelievable. Then The View offered her a contract. But obviously, only if she changed her views. And all of a sudden, she can say negative things. Money gets offered to people, and some people change. But, there's but I will people say on this, that list that for, are not taking money that decided for, that well, they're not supporting Well, for the most part, you. they are. You know, Barr did a book. Barr was a coward. The name people that you name, for every person you name, I can name 20 people that loved the administration. And maybe more importantly, the voters love the administration. The voters are dying to get back to it, Brett. The voters are tired of being laughed at all over the world. We're run by a fool. We're run by a man that doesn't have a clue. I want to talk about foreign policy, but just to leave this, you have former senior advisor Steve Cortez saying it's going to be tough for you to get the best and the brightest because of some of the name calling of people who left. Well, again, so what do you Steve say to Cortez that? Steve Cortez is a nice person, but I didn't give him the job he wanted because I didn't think he was qualified. Then he went over to the Sanctimonious's camp. I didn't give him the job. So I'd probably say the same kind of thing if I wouldn't get a job, if somebody wants a job. And a lot of the people that you mentioned there, they didn't get the job. A couple of them weren't made permanent. I didn't want to make them permanent because I didn't think they were good enough. Now, during the course of that four years, I know the best people. Remember this. We took out ISIS. We developed Space Force. I rebuilt the military. I got the largest tax cuts in history. I got the largest regulation cuts in history. I did right to try so that people don't have to die without a chance. We could use space age medical knowledge, and we have the greatest labs in the world. I did all of these things and much, much more. Nobody's ever seen it like that. One other thing Russia would have never invaded Ukraine. China would never be talking about even the concept of going into Taiwan. Would have never happened. I was getting out of Afghanistan. We would have gotten out through dignity and strength. Instead, it was the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. These are all great things, and people want them back. Mr. President, stand by if you would. 